listening to the Mark Bradford podcast. Hey, I'm going to get right on that. Well, hey there. Welcome back. I really appreciate your feedback, so much so that I wanted to read a couple of the podcast reviews I've gotten recently. This one is with the title, Thank You. It's from someone in the U.S., and it says, Amazing podcast topics, so very easy on the ears, especially loved Anastasia. Please continue to use your amazing set of skills to interview and create. And I think she was referring to Anastasia Chopolis, the... Um, amazing woman who uh, had a PhD in physics and went on to be a healer and teach other healers. Go ahead and look that one up if you want. It's uh, from, uh, I think, about a month ago. And this one makes me blush as well. It's entitled, Excellent Podcast, Mark. I've listened to your entire podcast now, some episodes multiple times, and I want to sincerely thank you for sharing your insight with the world. You've got a great gift in your mindful and wise practices, and you top it off perfectly with your subtle and advanced articulative communication skills. I greatly appreciate you taking the time to make these mini-sodes and hope your audience grows continuously. All the best, EB. Note that I sort of stumbled on the word articulative, which is kind of ironic. That's, uh, that's really amazing. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for reviewing, and I love reviews i love the feedback because it's really great to know what you're liking what you really like what you're migrating towards what surprised you and so forth because i do kind of flip back and forth between having uh, an interview which is typically about an hour ish and then also writing an article and having a podcast about that which i try to keep to 10 minutes to be very respectful of your time so love to hear the feedback on that love to hear which you're liking which you're liking more and so forth and please please keep the uh, reviews coming they're a little wonky on itunes as far as how you do that you kind of have to go back out and search for alchemy for life find it and then do the review but if you could boy that'd be great i mean i love the ratings i love the five stars but if i get five stars and i get some words with that man that is just awesome so thanks again i just wanted to thank the people that have rated this and people who are rating it and you for listening thanks So this was written to originally apply only to LinkedIn, but it really applies to any and all social media and real life. You will? Oh, I'll wait. See, if you're connecting, interacting, and responding on any social media sites, such as LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, etc., 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 what tense do you operate in? What do I mean by that? Well, unlike my podcast on why do you live here, and a link is in the notes, I'm not talking about reliving a moment in time. Instead, I'm talking about how you operate and connect with others. So how many times has someone connected with you only to say that they are, quote, going to check on that, or they're going to listen slash read slash investigate that? In the olden days of social media forums, and even now, it's sort of a running joke when someone would post, I'm going to check that out because it would mean they're not going to do anything. Why? So they interact and say that and post that to be part of the conversation. And yes, they may have the best of intentions, but almost no one posts, I'll check on that. And then a couple hours later, they come back with, hey, I did check on that just like I promised. And I learned the following and would like to discuss. It gets lost in the constant multiple streams going on. So, you know, why not just do that the first time? If someone posts an article or a link or a conversation, why not take the time to review it before you post? If the answer is that you don't have time at the moment, then make a note to yourself to check it out. If you do indeed check it out, then when you do come back and post, you'll be able to add something. If you never check it out, you'll do three positive things regardless. A. You'll get a better sense of priorities and what you really have time for because, you know, you'll drop the ball on this one and go, oh, I don't have time for that sort of thing. B, when you do, most people will see that your posts are always meaningful. Meaning, hey, when this guy says he's going to check something out, he actually does it. And C, you'll kind of distance yourself from like the 80% of the respondents who really don't check stuff out. Distancing yourself from them 
standing out is a good thing. When someone you consider to be a quote unquote thought leader on LinkedIn posts a comment, how many of those comments are, I'm going to check that out? 10%? 5%? None? Your expectation is that when they contribute, it's from the standpoint of someone who's informed, right? That's what makes them the leaders. So it's probably closer to none. You can be just as informed by reading the article, listening to that thing, etc. So when you interact, interact from the present, not the future. If you read the article or do the research, visit the website, check out that thingy first, when you post, it'll always be about your input now, in the present. Think about a post that has a lot of comments and you'll see exactly what I'm referring to. You'll see the vast majority are not from people who've read and are commenting. They're all living in the future. And in the end, it'll actually reduce how much time you spend, you know, waste versus meaningful time you use interacting and learning. Your connections will really like you more. I mean, in real life and also in, you know, the land of the internet. If you do your research first, you're much more likely to make an impact on your possible connection. Making an informed comment on a thread means people will see the, your words with more importance. Connecting with someone after you've checked out their stuff makes them more likely to connect. If someone connects with me with the opening line, I have to learn more about your stuff, then my mind thinks, well, then go right ahead. And then I move on to the next connection. I'm almost never surprised when they just don't follow up because it's more of like an opening line rather than, no, I really want to learn more. And when you're like me, when you're presenting all this media and this content and this consumable stuff that's right in the face of everyone, if someone comes to me and says, I'd like to learn more, I think, well, why didn't you learn more already? And I don't have these expectations that people need to like do a massive amount of research on me before they talk to me. I just think that's an odd opening line for someone who has so much media in front of him before anyone even gets near me. And I think a lot of us are becoming like that because we do create content. Regardless of what we do for a living, we do end up creating some content that people can know you by. So now you're gonna ask, aren't you supposed to sell your stuff? Well, no, and I'm going against the common wisdom here. I think there's a time to educate a potential client or person and a time for a potential connection to actually read over all the stuff you put into your profile and put effort into on your profile, your site, your media, etc. Hopefully you make it easy for them and potential clients. See, if everyone did this, we would be able to reduce the vast majority of the noise, the conflict and the misunderstanding on LinkedIn and other social media. You wouldn't have people responding to what the title says you'd have them responding to what the actual article says. And I think that's just far more meaningful for people. If you see an article that says, you know, this thing is a really bad thing. If you just respond and say, yeah, it sure is, probably is, kind of, right? I mean, that's what everyone believes, right? Yeah. I mean, that's just noise, you know. But if you go ahead and click on the article and read it, you may disagree. And that's far more valuable than just getting in line with someone saying, yeah, I have a bad feeling now too because I read those bad words. Or I read those good words and I have the perfect confirmation bias to agree with you. It's just more valuable to have differing opinions that are born of someone actually doing a little research. So what am I asking you to do? Am I asking you to say, hey, you know this 15 minutes of interacting on social media? I'd like that to be three hours of research. No, 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 that's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you need to do massive amount of research. All I'm saying is if you think about it, think about the tents you live in. I know I have a lot of tent jokes I could make here, but I'm not going to. Think about the tents that you live in. Do you live in the future tense or the current tense? Do you live in the present? So instead of making constant promises about what you're going to do, how about flip that around and just go do that thing and then come back? I mean, it's so much more meaningful and it surprises people and impresses them. If someone comes up to you and says, hey, I read that article and your response to them is, oh, well, okay, well, yeah, cool. We're on the same page here versus 
oh, that's an interesting article. I'll read that. And you know that you're just going to file that away in such a way that you're never going to hear from them again. So be part of the, the previous crowd. Be part of the people who impress people. Just do a little reading first. You may not even want to connect with them then. In some cases, you may say, I read your article and or I'm, I read your article and now, yeah, you go keep on being you because I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but you know what I mean? I mean, knowledge is power and so forth. So hopefully this made some sense to live in the proper tense. Don't live in the future. Maybe do the thing before you talk about the thing, which is an entirely different podcast about creativity, which you may see in a couple of weeks. So thanks again for listening. And I really appreciate it. Hey, it's Mark. Thanks for listening. As you've noticed, I'm starting to consolidate. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's author Mark Bradford. On Facebook, it's one Mark Bradford. Check out my books, The Status Game and The Status Game 2. And the card game, all found at thestatusgame.com. I appreciate you listening. And if I can help you in some way, just let me know. See you next time.